In this video, we're going to look at how you can create your own custom list view for an application. Now, the previous video, we just used a, a simple default list view of Android in part one of the videos. So today we're going to look at how can we create our own line or own items inside of this list view so that we don't sit with only one piece of text inside of the list view. So the example that we're going to build today is this example. So you'll see basically we're going to have our own custom look of every item in the list view. So you'll see we've got pictures on the left hand side, on the right hand side. We've got some uh, text views that we can put where we want. Uh, so really creating a customized look for your list view. Okay, so this is what we're going to build today. You also see that I use a lot of pictures here. So the pictures are just identifying different items as products. So we could look at a, a specific company that's just working with selling some computer products. So we're going to have uh, we're going to sell laptops. We're going to sell memory sticks and some external hard drives. And then you can see we've got some of the products could probably be on sale or just normal prices. So this is basically what we're going to look at and encoding how can we set different pictures to different items in this list view but still use the same layout. Okay, so you'll see that we need a lot of pictures in this example. So I want you to go to this link. If you do not have the pictures, go to this link and just download the zip file which is 1.34 meg. So it's not that big. So go and download this list view images and then we can start working on the project. Okay, so I just created a new blank project called List View Part 2. And we've got really only just a main activity and then the activity main that's linked to it. You can see the set content view is linked to activity main, which means it's going to show this layout. So on this layout, to have it look like, like the picture we just had, I'm going to use some large text that I'm going to center there. You can also see that I've, I'm working with a linear layout that is vertical. So if you're going to your coding, it should be linear layout and the orientation should be vertical. Okay, so I've just dragged in the text view. We're going to set some text there. We're just going to call it products. And then maybe we will make it bold. So if you scroll down to the text style property, you can set that one to bold. And then we're going to add a list view. So under containers, you'll find list view and we can just add the list view. So there we go. So if you click on the list view, let's just add some margin there at the top. Let's make it 10 dp, just to move it down a bit. And then we need to set the text on this one. So if you go to project, we can go into resources, values, strings, and let's just give it a name there for that string resource. So we're gonna say, string name equals now the name for this thing could just be simple products and then that's that's going to be the name for the item and then the physical text that we're going to have there is going to be products as well okay so that's basically the text that we're going to use so you can save i'm going to close down strings and then hide the project part again if you click on it double click on it you can see there's the text, put on three dots, and then go down to our products one day. Okay, and then if we say okay, that one gets changed to products. Okay, so this is our basic view or our main activities view on how we're going to create or where the list view is going to be displayed. So we're going to first have products and then we will have the list view. But remember now we want to have every item inside of this list view now look custom so in order to do that i'm going to need to add all of the pictures that we talked about earlier so in order to go and add the pictures you need to go to your resources folder right click and say new image asset click on the three dots there and then go and search for your specific images wherever you've unzipped that folder so I'm going to need to add all of them. So I'm going to start with best price there. Choose it. And let's call it best price again. And you can just say next and finish at the bottom. So you can see then under 
MIP map best price has been added. So let's do the same again. So we're going to say new image asset, choose your image, go to HDD, add that one and go and call it HDD as well. And now you can see HDD has been added as well. So I'm going to pause the video now and quickly just add all of those images the exact same way and then carry on the video from there. Okay, so now you basically work through all of uh, the pictures, setting up all the pictures. If you got to this point where you can see some of the pictures are actually cut off on the side, you can just go and click on center there in the foreground scaling. If you click on center, you'll see it's nicely laid out again and you can go and say next and finish. So if you've got all of your pictures there in your map map folder, then we can carry on creating our layout. Okay, so now uh, this is what we've got at this stage. We've got products as the heading and then we're going to have the list view. And now we need to define how every single one of these items will look like. So you need to go to uh, project on the left hand side and you can close down map map. We're going to go into our layout folder and we're going to create a new layout file. So you're going to say layout resource file. And we're going to call this layout resource file. Let's just call it product row layout product row layout and you can see the root element is a linear layout and then we can just say okay so there we've got a totally new layout again and this layout will help us now in order to define how we want to have every single one of our lines or items inside of the list view look okay so let's start creating this uh, layout for how we want to have this one look so the first thing that I'm going to do here is to add a linear layout that is going to be horizontal. So I'm going to add it into this one, the vertical one. And you can see now it spans the whole layout. So we don't want to have the height in the whole layout. So we're just going to say for the height property there, we're just going to say wrap the content. Okay, so now you can see it's a bit smaller there. So what we want to do now is to add an image view first. So you're going to go and add an image view inside of the horizontal layout. And then we're going to set the source property on that image view. And we're going to take that one to not color, not drawable, not ID, but into map map. There's one that says placeholder. So we're going to use the placeholder one, say OK. And then you can see we've got a placeholder there. OK, then on the placeholder or just after the placeholder, we're going to add another linear layout. So we're going to add a linear layout that is vertical after that one. And that linear layout, we don't want to have it span the whole width as well. So the whole width will not match parent, but it must be, please wrap the content in the width. Okay, so now what we want to drag into this linear layout will be a large text. as well as a small text. Okay, then after this one, we've got our linear layout now with the two text views there. We want to add one other image view there. So we're going to add that image view also inside of the horizontal linear layout. Okay, so you'll see that we don't have a source there. So let's just go to source again and just click on that placeholder again. Okay, and there you can see the picture. Now this doesn't look very nice because we actually want this placeholder to be there and then that picture to be right at the side. So if we quickly go into the coding part here, inside of this linear layout that is horizontal, we've got the image view, we've got the linear layout, and we've got another image view. So I'm going to remove the width of those. So I'm going to say 0 dp on the width, but then I'm going to add the Android property of layout. It's going to be layout weight property. And we're going to set the layout weight property there of let's set that one to one. And then the linear layout itself, also we want to do the same thing. So the width, we're going to set the width to 0 dp. 
and then we're going to add the layout weight property there. So I'm just going to copy that layout weight property. Mm, what did I click now? Copy it, and then going to go to the to a new line there, and I'm going to paste it there. Okay, so now we've got, but this weight property, we're going to make this weight 4. It spans 4 of the sizes on the screen. That one will span 1. And then if we go down to this image view, we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to set the width to 0 dp. And we're going to go down and set the Android uh, layout weight property to 1 also. So the two pictures will look the same. So if you go to design now, you can see that we've set this picture to be to take up one of the sizes on the horizontal layout. And this linear layout, which holds the two text views, must take up four spaces. So there's four plus one plus one gives me six spaces on the screen horizontally. And this one takes up one, this one takes up four, and that one takes up one of the spaces again. So now what we can do is to just go to our linear layout there and just maybe put a margin there at the top of, let's say, let's say 5 dp, just to move it down a bit. And then I think we are fine. We could also go to this linear layout and put some margin on the left if you like. But I think this is quite nice. It it looks as if we are on the right track so far. So this is what we've got so far. And then the last thing that I want to add is just a simple medium text that we're going to have for the, the description of every one of these components. So let's go to a medium text there and we're going to put the medium text right there underneath it. And that's a bit, just a bit to the side. So we're going to go to click on that medium text and let's set the margin left to be Let's make it five as well. So you can see it's a bit from the side. Okay, so this is basically our layout for how we're going to use this specific um, list view. Every item in the list view will basically now look like this. So this is setting up the list view. So now for every one of these components, we need an ID. So I'm going to go to the first one there, the first image view, and I'm going to call it IV type. That will be the type of the product. If it's a laptop, we're going to show a laptop. If it's a memory stick, it's going to show a memory stick and so forth. So that's the type. Then the other picture there is the icon that we're going to indicate if there's a sale or not. So I'm going to call that one IV sale. So you can see there's IV type and IV sale. And then inside of our linear layout, we've got those two text views. So the first text view there, I'm going to call that one TV title that's going to be the title for the product and then that one will be TV price that will be the price for the product and then this one will be the description so we're going to call that one TV description okay so now on the left hand side you should now have IDs for all of those components. Let's just quickly see. You've got IV type, TV title, TV price, IV sale, and then TV description. So you must have IDs for all of those so that we can set them up in coding. So this is basically how it's going to look on the screen. We're going to have a laptop, a memory stick, or maybe a hard drive picture there. This one will either be sale or not sale, and then we're going to set the specific descriptions on it. So this is basically it for designing um, just the layout for how every line in the list view will look like. Now in order for us to do the next part, we need to go and create a new class. So we're going to go into Java, into the first folder there without the Android test in brackets, and we're going to right click there and say new Java class. And I'm going to call this class product. So this will ju just be a simple Java class to define every element in the list view. So it's going to be product and you're going to say OK. And then I'm just going to close that view. It's not going to extend anything. It will just be a simple Java class. So just to spare some time in the video and not for you guys to basically need to go and look at me typing everything. This will basically be the class. So this is the class, class product. We're going to have a title, 
the description and the type of type stream. We're going to have a price and we're going to have a sale. So if you look at our row layout, that's basically all the components that we had on the screen. One, two, three, four, five different components. And if you go into the product class, you'll see those five different components. So basically we need a class that will help us to set the items on this layout. So remember that you can have more than the number of items that you want to display in the list view, but you should have at least those. So now the, the constructor basically takes in a title, a description, a type, a price and the sale. And we set our title, description, type, price and sale that belongs to the class to those values. So that's just setting up the product. And then we've got some getter methods. So we're going to get the title to return the title, get the description to return the description, get the type to return the type, get the price to return the price and get sale to return the sale. So you can see this is a basic, a very basic Java class just to set up so that we can create some objects here that we can that will help us in order to put these objects values inside of the list view. Okay, so that's basically just creating the class. So uh, we can close the class or maybe we can leave it open. And what we need to do now is to go and create an adapter that will help us to set up this whole thing. So the adapter will use this class as well as this layout and then set up how it will display in our list view. So what we need to do now is to go and create a new class again. So in that same folder again, we're going to right click and you're going to say new Java class. And we're going to name this class product adapter. So this will be our adapter class, product adapter. And you, ju you can just say OK. OK, now for this class product adapter, we need to go and say extends. And this one should extend an array adapter. And that's the Android widget one. And now this array adapter must be of a certain type. So we're going to set this type to our product class that we created. OK, then you'll see it's going to give you an error because we need to go and set a constructor for this one. So I'm just going to remove product here. Oh, sorry, project. And before we're going to get to the constructor, we're going to have some other values just set quickly. So we're going to set two final variables. The first one is going to be private, final context, and we're going to call it context. Alt enter for your import. Okay, and then for the next one, we're also going to say private. final and then this one will be our array list so it's going to be array list the array list must also be of that same type product and then we're going to call it values and you can see again both of these are going to give you an error because we are defining a final variable which is a constant and we're not giving it a value so we're going to get to the value now inside of uh, the constructor so let's set up the constructor quickly. So it's going to be public product adapter, same name as the class. And then in brackets, we're going to accept a context object. And then the second argument is going to be an array list object of the same type again. It's going to be product. And we're going to call this one list. Okay, so basically, when we're going to start creating this array adapter, we're going to pass into the to the um, constructor, we're going to pass in the context as well as an array list. So the context will just be the class that we're working in. In this case, it's going to be the main activity that's calling it. So it's going to be main activity dot this. And then we're going to pass in a list of objects that will going to that's going to be product objects that will go into this constructor. And then we need to make a call to the superclass constructor here. So we're going to say, we're going to pass in the context that was passed through. So it's just going to be a reference to the main activity. And then the second argument must be the layout file that you want to specify. 
So we're going to say r.layout. And it's going to be this product layout of ours, the one that you want your list view to look like, or every element in the list view to look like. So it's going to be r.layout.product row layout. And then the third argument will be the array list that we're going to pass through. So now all of the errors are gone in the constructor. So let's set up those two values. So we're going to say this dot context will be the context that was passed through in this method in this constructor. So context will be set to context and the list that will be passed through is going to be set to values. So we're going to say this dot values equals the list that was passed through. And now all of the errors are gone because this guys are now happy because we have initialized them to those two values. Okay, so this is the constructor, basically just passing in the context, sending it to super, but also sending it to our own context. Passing in the list, which will set it to our list in values, as well as sending it to the super class. And then the second argument there is just referring to the specific row layout that you want to use. So in this case, it's our product row layout. Okay, and now for the next part, we need a specific method. So you're going to go to code at the top and say override implement or override methods. And you're going to search for the get view method and add the get view method. Okay, so now this very method is a very, very important method. So the return type there, we can just move it along. We're going to get to the return time right at the end. Okay, so in this method, what basically happens is we're passing in a list, an array list of all our data, every product that is specified. Remember, it's of type product, so it's these type of objects. It's got a title, a description, type, price, and so forth. So we're going to pass it through, and then for every item in the array list, it's going to call the getView method. So this getView method, you can see, has got a position there. So it's basically going to start with the first element in the list and it's going to be position zero. Then the second element in the list is going to be position one and so forth. So in this case, every single item inside of list will then, for every item it will be called, it will call the get view method and it's going to refer to a specific position. Now in order for, for this get view method to get hold of this row layout of ours, which is an external layout, we need to use a layout inflator. So we're going to say layout inflator, android.view, and we're going to call it inflator equals, we're going to convert this to a layout inflator, and then we're going to go to context. So now context is the context that was passed through. That's basically going to be our main activity. So on the main activity, we're going to get the system service and the service that we want to use in the main activity will be context dot layout inflator service. Okay, so we are basically just making a connection to the main activities layout inflator service so that we can inflate this layout to every item in the list view. Okay, so we've made a connection to the layout inflator of the main activity. And then we need to set up a new view in order to connect to this row layout, to this specific layout of ours. Okay, so we're going to say equals inflator, the object that we just created, dot inflate. And now we need to tell it what do we need to inflate. So we're going to say we're going to inflate r dot layout dot, and that's the one that we want to inflate. Okay, and then the second argument will just be this view group that was passed through. So it's going to be parent. And then the last argument we're just going to leave as false. So these two arguments doesn't really matter to us at this stage. We just want to inflate this specific row layout. So we're making making a connection, making a connection to the product row layout by using the inflate service. So now after this line, we've got a connection to this row layout. And now we need to make a connection to every one of these items to go and set the text and the images to those items. So how do we do that? So the first three items that I'm going to look at is the three text views. Remember in our list view, uh, in our layout, we had one, two, three text views. So let's set them up quickly. Alt enter for your import. And then the first text view will be, let's start with the title. And now again, we need to convert it to the correct type. Remember that 
find view by ID method. But now instead of just saying find view by ID, we need to go and make a reference to this row view, which got a connection to the row layout. So it's going to be row view dot find view by ID. And the ID for that specific one is TB title. So what did we do now? This row view has got a connection to the row layout, this layout. And to make a connection to every component here, we need to go and say row view dot find the view by its ID, go and find TV title. And TV title is this one. So now we made a connection to it. Let's do the same for the other two. So it's going to be text view again. This one will be TV. Um, what did we have there? TV title, TV price. And then this is also going to be a text view. Also refer to row view find view by ID and that one will be TV price and then the last text view that we want to make a connection to is TV description okay, so it's TV description and then it's going to be also a text view and it's we're going to refer to row view dot find view by its ID and then it will be TV description. Okay, so now we've made a connection to the three text views. Remember that we also need to make a connection to those two uh, image views. So how do we make a connection to the two image, view, image views? It's also just going to be the same thing. Image view, and we called it IV. I think one was called IV type. So just alt enter for your import there. IV type equals an image view now also row view and find view by its id and then it's going to be iv type okay then the same for the other image view we call that one iv sale also row view find the view by its id and it will be IV sale. Okay, so now we made a connection to the three text views, we made a connection to the two image views, and now we can start working with them. So now let's go and set the text on the text views. So I'm going to say TV title dot set text. Now, where do we get the text now to go and set to the text or to TV title? Remember that we pass through the array list. And that array list contains now all of these pro product objects. So there we've got the title, a description, a type, a price, and a sale. And we can get them by using the get methods. So now because this list, which is called values now, because list was set to values, uh, remember that every element in that list, in that array list, well now for every element we're going to call the get view method. So how do we get the, the values or the object from values. So that will just be values dot get and then in a specific position we're going to get the object and the position will be indicated by this position. So we're going to say position dot get and in this case we're going to get the title. So values dot get position will get the object and then on the object we are calling the get title method. So let's do the same for TV price dot set text and it's also going to be values dot get position dot get price. But now this get price method returns a double. So we just need to convert it to a string by just adding some sort of text to it. So I'm just going to add an R there in front of it so it looks like a RAND value. Okay, and then the last one is the TV description. And we're going to set the text to, again, values dot get the position dot get the description so now we've got the description we've got the title and we've got the price set and now we can go and set the three pictures now for those or sorry the two pictures for those two pictures or the image views we're going to set them according to a specific value now remember in our products we've got uh, the get type which returns a string and the get sale which returns a boolean so we, let's do the sale first so if a product is on sale it will be true otherwise it's going to be false so i'm going to uh, use this get sale method to get the sale it's either going to be true or false so we're going to say if uh, this specific value 
values dot get position this specific object product object dot get sale equals true but because it returns a true or a false we can just leave it as it is you can say double equal sign true to make sure it's true but this one will be true and then the else will be if it's not in a sale so if it is a sale we want to now go and show these pictures so if it's a sale i'm going to use on sale big if it's not a sale i'm going to use best price okay so how do we do it we're going to say iv in this case it's iv sale dot set image resource and then we're going to say r dot mipmap dot i no, sorry what is it called the sale one was on sale big is the picture's name and you can see the picture on the left hand side as well but if it's not on sale we're going to set the image resource to r dot mipmap dot and that will just be best price okay so there's the two pictures if it's on sale it's going to show the sale if it's not on sale it's going to show the normal picture let's do the same for the other one so if our type now so we're going to look at the type so we're going to go to values dot get position again dot get type and we're going to compare this to a specific value in this case we're going to compare it to a laptop so if it's a laptop we're going to show a specific picture if the type is a laptop else if values dot get position dot get type dot equals so if it equals memory we're going to show a different picture we're going to show the memory picture and then the else will just be to show the hard disk drive so now to set up those pictures we need to go and say ivy type dot set image resource or dot map map dot and then the picture name in this case just the laptop that's the laptop and then ivy type again dot set image resource or dot map map dot and we're going to go down to memory we can just move up a bit and then the last one ivy type dot set image resource or dot map map dot and this time we're going to say hdd so that's the hardest drive okay so we've set a picture if the type is a laptop it's going to have a laptop picture there if it's memory it's going to have a memory picture there and if it's a hardest drive we're going to have a hardest drive there and then the last thing that we need to add here is to just have changed this return type and what we want to return now is this whole row view of ours remember on this row view is basically everything that we set up now this is all there's the text views as well as the two image views and what we've set to them so that's the whole thing we return so if we return this row view it's going to return this newly created row according to this layout it's going to set it as every item in the list so this is basically it for product adapter okay so the last thing that we need to do for this class of ours or this application is now to go to the main activity and start setting up uh, our array list so that we can set some components to the list view so remember our main layout just has uh, the products there at the top and then the list view so this is very important that you set the the list view set an id for the list view so you can just go and set the id there as lv products so just set up uh, the list view id there lv product so make sure that your list view has got an id if your list view has got the id we can now go and set up everything nicely i'm going to remove those few imports there so at the top we're going to create our own list view or just make a connection to the list view so we declare the list view and i'm going to call it lv products as well so you can just hover over it say import class and then make a connection to that list view so it's going to be lv products uh, equals list view find the view by its id and i call it lv products so this is just making a connection to that specific list view and then 
we also need an array list so we're going to use uh, array list of type product that class that we created and I'm going to call it products and then we can initialize it inside of the onCreate so we can go and say products equals new array list of type product so we've initialized our array list and now we need to set some values to this array list so to set some values to this array list I'm just going to quickly paste the values here so that we don't take up too much time so there's a few values now I've, I've called it not products but product so I'm just going to quickly remove the S's there just to get some products going and remember you can type anything you want here I'm going to go through it now just to make sure that everyone understands so you can see there let me just get the whole thing on the screen there we go so it's going to be product product one remember our class is named is, is named product which accepts a title a description a type a price and then a true or false value if it's on sale or not so at this stage title description type price and sale so the title the latitude the description the type the price and then if it's on sale or not the same for product 2, title, description, type, the price, and then true or false if it's on sale or not. And the same for product 3 and product 4. So just the same thing all over again. And then to our array list there, that's called products, we can go and add these three pro or these four products, product 1, 2, 3, and 4. So now if you added those three, we can now start setting up our adapter. So this will be as easy as just going and creating a new object of our type product adapter. So we're going to say product adapter and we're going to call it adapter equals new product adapter. And now remember we created that constructor in product adapter. So what do we accept in brackets? So we accept the context and the list that we want to send through. So the context will basically just be this, or you can say main activity dot this. And then the second argument will be this list view that we created now with all of our products. And that's all. Now that whole thing will set up everything for us. And now the last thing that we need to go and do is just to say that to that list view of ours, LV products, which is this list view, to that list view, we're going to set an adapter and the adapter that we're going to set is the one that we actually created now and that that's all for this application so we can just go quickly go through this again on the adapter side i'm passing in the context which is the main activity and then i'm passing through products which is this product that we created product one two three and four so Every time that we go into, or when we send through this to the array adapter, which is product adapter, it's going to accept the list there with these four items. And for every one of those four items, it will call this getView method, and the position will change from 1, 2, or 0, 1, 2, and 3 for the four different values. And every time it will go through this and set the appropriate uh, text views as well as the appropriate. Uh, images so let's run this application quickly and see what will happen so there's the virtual device let's run it quickly and see if everything looks fine and there we go so thanks for watching the video hope you've learned something and please apply this in any upcoming assignments where you need to do a list view please go and create your own custom view of or your own custom custom version of a list view.